I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed to bring God's truth to you today. Now the truth is, I count it a privilege from heaven to be able to minister God's word to you. See, because when I stand here to minister, I receive words from Him. I don't come tell you what I've planned, prepared, arranged. I wait in His presence and let Him give me what to say. He, sometimes He gives me directions. But then even with that, when I stand here, I depend on Him to lead the way by giving utterance. So I find myself so useful to the Lord right now because of you, praise God. Yeah, that's the truth. Now, before going to today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread just like Jesus commanded us to do? Join me right now and make this demand. Say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Listen, He is planning to give you something today. Question, how are you planning to receive it? Are you really planning on receiving what He's giving to you? If there is a giving, there ought to be a receiving. If you must enjoy what you're being given. Praise God. So expect a miracle. And guess what? Now, I know some of you are suddenly beginning to find things easier than they used to be before. When it comes to provisions, meeting needs. The reason, because I get your testimonies. Some of you don't understand what we are doing. And that's why when we make those declarations, you just, mm, okay, okay, okay. Say it as we say it. Say it. Just say it. Don't think it, say it. It's part of the peace that he has promised. You know, in Numbers chapter 25, I think, Phineas, now the, the children of Israel were going through a plague. They were going through a challenging period. And God told them, oh, they have sinned against God. And then they stood in the house of God and they began to repent. And then there was this fellow who was so mad, he brought in a, a foreign lady and was in the tent with this lady. Now, this was what God was rebuking them for because they had gone uh, practicing halotry. You see, they had gone to worship, they had followed strangers to worship their gods and God was angry with them. So while this was going on, this fellow brought in a strange lady. <laughs> And the Bible said there was a man named Phineas. Phineas saw what was going on and he took a javelin and went into that tent and trust both of them and they died. And God spoke to Moses and said, oh, because the Bible said when he did that, God stopped the plague. And then God said to Moses, he says, look, this guy has helped everybody because because of his action, he has atoned for your sins. And God said to him, hey, tell him, I'm going to make a covenant of peace with his house and his generations after him. Now, God says, I am going to make a covenant of peace with the house of Phineas and generations after him. What does that tell you? By the action of Phineas, he has brought his own lineage into a covenant of peace with God. Now, does that mean challenges will not come? It doesn't mean challenges will not come. What it simply means is these ones will always be exempted from the result or from the, 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 the evil result of any challenge. It just simply means that whatever they go through, whatever they face, God is going to show up in their life and make sure they find peace. You see that? And that's how God operates with us. If God says, I'm leaving my peace with you, Jesus said those words. And you have 
received it. I spoke to you yesterday about how do you know you have received it? You've got to be sure you have received it. You've got to meditate on it until you know that you know that you have received it. It's not just to confess, I receive, I receive. No, no. Lie down on your bed sometimes and ask yourself, do I really know that I have received this peace? What challenge is going to take me away from his peace? Can I think of any? See that now? Make sure you have received it. Received his peace. Make sure. He said, my peace I give to you. I've been telling you this. It doesn't mean challenges will not come. But what do you do in the face of a challenge? Do you remember he has promised his peace? It is that remembrance that will make you turn to him and say, Lord, I know you promised me peace. You're sitting down in that plane and, and suddenly there's commotion everywhere. And you know how it goes. Everybody begins to shout. Everybody begins to pray. Everybody begins to call on their God, whatever God that they know how to call on. Now, instead of you panicking and go, oh, Father, hey, God. No, no. Say, Lord, the most powerful prayers are not the ones or are not the loudest. The most powerful prayers are the prayers prayed with perfect understanding. So he said, Lord, I remember you promised me peace. And by reason of that promise, I know one thing. This plane is not crashing. No one will be hurt because I'm here. I've got a covenant of peace with you. And you say that and relax. How can you relax in that kind of environment? You can't. Because what are you going to stress yourself for? You know the one who holds your life and he is alive. He didn't go on vacation when you step into that place. He's, you know, I always said it. If anything is going to happen, he's going to tell me first. If he didn't tell me, then it's not a challenge. So when it comes up, I'm going to deal with it like it's not a challenge. How do I deal with that? I'm not going to let it terrify me. I would rather just, look, you didn't tell me about this. So what do we do now? He said, that's why it's important you have a working relationship with the Lord. You can't do without that. Because he said, without me, you can't do nothing. Accept it, that as truth. Don't even try. I don't try to do anything by myself. I don't. I, I, I've told you this before. Even when I pray, I don't pray by myself. I want to pray the first thing as I go on my knees or maybe I'm standing. The first thing that crosses my mind is, Lord, you know you've got to give me your chance on this, this matter. How do we pray about this? How do we pray about this? See, when he begins to give you utterance, he begins to tell you what to say. Now, you are intelligent enough to analyze what he's telling you, at least the much you can analyze. And then you begin to get an understanding of his mind. I've seen that happen many times. I was sharing with you a few days ago how the Lord was talking to me about our nation and how he's not happy with the church in our nation. Oh, Oh, I carry that burden for days. Lord, take it that we didn't know. Because I didn't know. I didn't know this extent. Maybe if I had known, maybe I would have said something or done something about it. But I didn't know. So if I didn't know, I'm telling you what I was saying to the Lord. If I didn't know, then maybe didn't know. The Lord says no. But see, I was bringing intercession before the Lord. And then the Lord said to me, I'm going to give the church one more opportunity. And the Lord said, this shall be the sign of it. And the Lord spoke to me about politics and things that are going to happen. But he says, I'm giving the church one more opportunity to put itself right. And when that sign happens, which is going to happen soon, 
or we will shout it and make sure the church gets in line with the mind of God. It's a responsibility. It's a responsibility. See, he's saying that because he wants us to enjoy peace. You see, he wants us to enjoy his peace. Don't ever think God will sit down there and just watch you go through. Now, he was going to Sodom to destroy Sodom. But you see, he never wanted to take Abraham by surprise. Because Lot was there. And beyond Lot being there, they are somehow part of his neighborhood. So he went to Abraham and said, Abraham, there's something I want to do. I just thought I should let you know. Okay, what is it, Lord? The cry of Sodom has come up before me. And I'm going there to destroy it. Now, I see, the Lord did not say, Abraham, go warn them. No, I've told you this before. If God wants to destroy a place, he won't warn them. He will just destroy them. If God sends a warning, uh, trust me, the intention was not to destroy, even though he was angry. And, and, and one who carries that truth will know how to deal with this situation. That's the truth. That's how we deal with issues. Thank you, Lord Jesus. He loves peace and he gives us that peace. Now, when it comes to your life, your marriage, your children, your job, now God has promised you peace in your marriage, for example. It doesn't mean things will not happen that will cause disagreements. It doesn't mean things will not happen that will scare even you. I told you, it's okay to feel fear, but it is wrong to become afraid. You don't control the feeling of fear when it comes. But you have every right to control yourself from being afraid. See that now? That's the truth. So things will be thrown at you. Things will come up, let's say in your marriage or in your finances. Things that you have to do. So things will come up that may scare you. What do I do? Hey. You see, sometimes people say, oh, because I was angry, I, I, I didn't want to pray. Or sometimes people say, oh, um, I was terrified, so I, 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 could, I, I didn't believe I, I could hear God at that time. Brothers and sisters, God speaks louder than anything. He speaks so you will hear Him. Now that's one truth you must settle in your mind. See, uh, no matter how you feel terrified, feeling of fear, however you feel, learn to switch to Him. Now, there is a peace. I can survey. There is a peace that comes with when you switch into Him. I don't know if you felt that peace before. Cause, cause, now, of course, it comes with that understanding that He is there with you. So when I switch to Him, I say, Lord, you said, Lord, Lord, hey, come on, you don't even believe he's there. Because <laughs> that's not how you're going to talk to him if you really know he's there. Lord, you promised me peace. Now this thing is going on. Can you tell me what you want me to do? And the Lord will tell you exactly what you should do. <laughs> I'm telling you the truth. And, and you know the truth. Now sometimes, like I've always told you many times, look, when God is dealing with you, He's dealing with you for you. God is not going to be dealing with you and telling you what your spouse should do. He's going to tell you what you should do. So when He speaks to you, learn to submit to His word. And don't say, Lord, thank you. Go and talk to my husband. Go and talk to my wife. No, you do what He's commanding you to do. When you do what He's commanding you to do, He'll bless you. Now, guess what? That's what restores the peace. In your finances, the same way. Sometimes say, oh, have you been tight? You say, ah, my pastor, you don't understand. Things have been so bad that I, 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 in fact, I can't even tight because things are very bad. You see, because you are not walking with that peace. If you're walking with that peace, you know what you're going to do the next time you receive money? It doesn't matter how things have been bad. You will come before him and say, Lord, 
You know, I come with my tithe because you have promised me peace. And I want to activate that peace right now. When you do that, you will be amazed how things will begin to turn out and begin to work for your favor. My time is up. Praise God. Now listen, we, are ha we have this prayer meeting running and I want you to join. I want you to join. I don't want you to miss it. Go to our website. The website is on your screen. Register and join the prayer meeting. If you want more information, you can send us a message and we'll explain to you. We can call you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. See you tomorrow. Bye.